And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Panakosaurus, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Panakosaurus was an ankylosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Mongolia and China, in the Bayanmandahu Formation and Jadokta Formation. It looked kind of like Ankylosaurus with a body covered in armor, but less spiky, and a club tail. Nice. It was estimated to be 16.4 feet or 5 meters long and weigh up to 2 tons. Well, that's a lot smaller than Ankylosaurus. Yeah, it was medium-sized. It's also not as robust as other Ankylosaurs. It had a flat body. It did have robust arms and legs. It had 5 digits on each hand and 3 digits on each foot. And it had hoof-shaped claws. In adults, their skulls were longer than they were wide, and the armor on the upper snout consists of a fused mass. It had these bone tiles on its head and nostrils that formed a depression and had between three and five smaller holes in them. It's unclear why they had those holes. It also had cheek horns, a smooth beak, and rows of small teeth, osteoderms on the neck, back, and tail, although juveniles didn't have osteoderms on the tail. Oh, they found a juvenile. Mm hmm And two cervical half rings protecting the neck, as well as long, flat, triangular spikes on the body and tail, and smaller oval osteoderms in parallel rows on the back. And it had a relatively small tail club. It does sound a fair amount like Ankylosaurus. Mm hmm But smaller. Panakosaurus was the earliest specimen Phil Curry and Victoria Arbor studied in 2011 that had a complete tail club. They compared the tails of ankylosaurs and said it was most likely that ankylosaur tails stiffened before the knob or the club at the end of the tail formed to maximize its effectiveness as a weapon. That would make sense. Because mm -hmm. a, a bat is still useful, whereas like a loosey-goosey tail with a big mass at the end isn't so useful. The type species is Panakosaurus Granger eye, and the fossils were first found in 1923 by Walter Granger, so that's how the species name came about. It was named then in 1933 by Charles W. Gilmore, and the genus name Pinacosaurus means plank lizard. Yeah, plank lizard is a pretty good name for an ankylosaur. Yeah, it refers to those plank scutes that covered the head. Oh, the head specifically, interesting. Mm-hmm. I was thinking the whole body is pretty much covered in planks. <laughs> but maybe because, like you were saying, on the head in ankylosaurs, a lot of times the bones sort of fuse together a little bit more, more like planks. Mm -hmm. A second species, Panakosaurus mephistocephalus, was named in 1999 by Pascal Godfroy, based on a specimen found in 1996 during a Belgian-Chinese expedition. And that species name refers to the devilish squamosal horns, and it means Mephistopheles' head. Oh, that's interesting. That's a really hard species name to say. But I thought Mephistopheles was always kind of a cool word. Yeah, it's like a little bit of a tongue twister. It is. <laughs> now those fossils, the Mephistocephalus fossils, include a well-preserved skull, lower jaws, a lot of the postcranial, the body, including the cervical armor and tail club. Oh, wow. Yeah, from neck to tail. Yes, but the left arm, part of the pelvic girdle, and the hind limb are missing. They wrote in the description that the, quote, skeleton was not deformed by pressure after burial, and there's no evidence of post-mortem transportation. Cool. That's helpful in it not getting too messed up. Mm-hmm. It was also probably a subadult. Ah, uh, okay. So even though it's smaller than Ankylosaurus, maybe it could have gotten bigger. Well, the second species, so... Oh, the Mephistophocephalus? Yes. I probably screwed that up, but... <laughs> smaller than the Granger eyes species. Gotcha. The Mephistocephalus species is about 10 feet or 3 meters long. It had a smaller skull, too, than the holotype. Oh, that's way smaller, yeah. Like it pretty much fit in a room. <laughs> Almost. The differences, though, in the nostril region is why they named a second species. The authors wrote, quote, the nasal is by far the largest bone of the skull roof, forming more than half of the length of the skull. Hmm. The skull shape, though, is similar to a juvenile Panakosaurus granger eye specimen. Now, in the Mephistocephalus specimen or species, the premaxilla is not completely covered by nasal and accessory dermal plates like we see in Panakosaurus granger eye. 
In 2010, Gregory Paul suggested Panakasaurus mephistocephalus was a junior synonym of Panakasaurus grangeri, but in 2012, Robert Hill said that the second species was valid, and Victoria Arbor and Michael Burns confirmed it. And Victoria Arbor in 2014 wrote about the systematics, evolution, and biogeography of ankylosaurs. Not just in 2014. Yes, it's Writes true. about that all the time. <laughs> In 1935, Young referred a third species, Panacosaurus nynciensis, based on similarities in the teeth and jaws, but now that one's considered to be Panacosaurus grangeri. In 1971, Marianska had said that Panacosaurus nynciensis was a junior synonym of Panacosaurus grangeri, and other paleontologists have since agreed. Marianska also synonymized another dinosaur, Cymrosaurus, named by Maliv in 1952 with Panacosaurus grangeri. When Gilmore was first describing Panacosaurus grangeri, he only described the right ilium and tail vertebra without naming the dinosaur, and then later in that year officially named it as Panacosaurus grangeri. The holotype of Panacosaurus grangeri was found in the second Central Asiatic Expedition of the American Museum in the Flaming Cliffs, and it included a crushed skull, the first two neck vertebrae, and osteoderms, which is probably how they came up with the plank head name. Mm. In Gilmore's second description, which was published in December of 1933, he wrote the specimen is, quote, so badly crushed and broken that much of its detailed structure is obscured, but in view of its unique occurrence, it seems worthy of description, although I am fully aware of the meagerness of its characterization. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a old-timey way to say it's not a great find yes there's a badly crushed skull and jaws and a few scattered dermal bones but the skull was covered in scutes the teeth were extremely small he also wrote quote although badly crushed and checked in all directions practically all parts of the skull and lower jaws are present ah nice yeah so if you're good at puzzles you could put most of it back together yeah, and viewed from above, the skull has this sub-triangular shape. And he wrote, quote, It is evident that, as in other members of this family, the entire top of the skull is covered with ossified dermal scutes, which completely obscure the underlying cranial elements. It's good. Yeah. I mean, it's not great for paleontology, but it's really nice for protection. Yes, it was good for that dinosaur when it was alive. And nowadays, we could throw it in a CT scanner and see what's under those scutes. Mm -hmm. As long as there isn't too much metal in the fossil. Now, other specimens, the skull and skeleton of a juvenile was found in 1964 in a Polish-Mongolian expedition and in other localities of the Mongolian Gobi Basin by the Soviet-Mongolian expeditions. Robert Hill and others described a new juvenile specimen of Panacosaurus grangeri in 2003 that was found in Mongolia, and it consists of a nearly complete skull. Nice. Yeah. Maybe not as badly crushed, hopefully. Well... Panacosaurus grangeri turned out to be the second most common dinosaur found at the Banyan Mandahu after Protoceratops andrewsi. Oh, wow. It's mostly known from juveniles and subadults, but more than 30 skeletons were found in 1969 to 1970 as part of Soviet Mongolian expeditions. Holy cow, I had no idea there were so many Panacosaurus or Pinacosaurus, <laughs> I never know how to say it, specimens. That's awesome. Yeah, and then another 30 specimens were oh, found geez. between 1993 and 1998 during Mongolian Japanese expeditions, and then Canadian expeditions found another 40 specimens between 2001 and 2006. Jeez, so there's over 100 specimens known? That's insane. Yeah. I mean, I think there's like 200 or something <laughs> protoceratops, but for an ankylosaur, that's like unheard of. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Teresa Marianska described a well-preserved juvenile skull in 1971 and 1977, but there's also a lot more not-yet-described fossils found, so I don't actually know how many specimens there are. Mm. Or how many species they'll end up with once more of them are described. Mm. Eric Buffet taught referred ankylosaur fossils that were found in Shandong, China, to Panacosaurus in 1995. There was a juvenile described in 2015 that had a complex hyoid bone. Oh, the tongue bone. Yes. And that may mean that Panacosaurus had a powerful tongue to go with the small teeth, which it replaced relatively slowly. Some extant living salamanders have similar tongue bones and prehensile tongues. Oh, huh. So maybe Panacosaurus ate some insects, or maybe it went for tough leaves and pulpy fruits. That's really interesting. I remember a paper... 
not too long after that, talking about how dinosaur hyoid bones probably meant that they couldn't move their tongue that much. But I guess that doesn't apply to Panacosaurus. Yeah. That's really cool. There's a paper in 2011 that analyzed the quarry diagram of juvenile Panacosaurus that were found in China, and they said that all of them were found upright with their limbs positioned under their bodies. That's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> and in 2011, Michael Burns and others analyzed the juvenile Panacosaurus grangerized specimens that were found there. All of them had preserved skulls. We wow. Have, we have a lot of skulls. And they found Panacosaurus to be the most basal member of Ankylosaurine. Okay. Or Ankylosaurine, according <laughs> yeah. to the pronunciation you, you found yeah. recently. You do the E's instead of A's. Yeah, that's a subfamily of Ankylosauridae, or Ankylosauridae, I guess, meaning that had the club tail. But it's even closer to Ankylosaurus than just a regular old Ankylosaurid might be. Explains why they look so similar. Mm-hmm. Now, four specimens were collected by the Canada-China Dinosaur Project at Bayan Mandahu and were prepared. And a fifth specimen was found at an unknown site at the same area by the Silk Road Expedition. Now, the best specimens of the bunch were on display as part of a traveling exhibit called The Greatest Show Unearthed. Does sound like a pretty great show, all those ankylosaurs. Yeah. The juvenile ones. Now, most of them died in situ and they were buried either during sandstorms or rainstorms. And then 12 more juveniles were found in the Sino-Canadian Dinosaur Project. Just keep finding more and more. Mm -hmm. And they all had post-mortem insect borings. So they didn't get buried deep enough, fast enough to avoid the insects, I guess. Yeah. In 2021, Gabor and others studied whether ankylosaurs from the Cretaceous lived alone or moved in herds. Adult ankylosaurs were often thought to be solitary because most skeletons have been found as isolated individuals. But some mass death assemblages, or MDAs, have been found, such as the more than 30 juvenile panacosaur skeletons collected between 1995 and 1996 by the Mongolian-Japanese expedition, but it's possible some of them were discovered before but left behind in the 1969 Soviet-Mongolian expedition. That's a lot for one bone bed. Yeah. It's possible panacosaurus was gregarious as individuals, maybe for protection, since these MDAs had juveniles of similar sizes. Oh, so they had like a juvenile group? Yeah. Or maybe they came together during a drought. They were found in different localities, and that could mean that this was true gregarious behavior. But it still would be hard to know their social structure. Panacosaurus lived in an arid to semi-arid environment, with large open areas of low and sparse vegetation, which would have been good for multiple individuals gathering. Other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place included the Ankylosaur, Minotaurosaurus, Alvarosaurus, Col and Shuvuya, Ovaraptorosaurus, Chidipati and Khan, Ornithomimosaurs, Troodontids, Titanosaurs, and Ceratopsians. Mongolia has some really cool dinosaurs, especially Ankylosaurus. <laughs> yes. And other animals that lived around the same time and place included amphibians, crocodilomorphs, lizards, mammals, pterosaurs, and turtles. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 